Hey guys, it's Chrissy with Collision Hub, and this is part three of our series on what's new with iCar. And now this one I've really been looking forward to, because you know I start every OE show by saying, hey, you gotta get on the RTS portal. It's where I go every morning. There's always some sort of daily information news article there that, that guides me throughout even training or, or cars or consulting with shops. I mean, there's all kinds of information there. Um, and it's kind of like, I feel like I've got Henry Ford taking me for a drive in my new <laughs> Ford, right? I got Jason taking me on a tour of the RTS portal. Just like Henry Ford. Yeah, just, <laughs> just like Henry Ford. Just like Henry Ford. Well, the hair. Yeah, maybe. yeah, for sure. Yeah, aerodynamics. So yeah, I can't say anything about hair. <laughs> right. Is this the new iCar dress code? It is. is that, it's like, Absolutely. Okay. Yep. So that was what that other meeting was about the other yep. day. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Can't wait to see what Susan and Danielle have to say about the new dress code. Bold right. Dress code. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to cover, you know, I, I, RTS has changed a lot. Yeah. You, you said, what, we're on year five? Yeah, the, the website launched, uh, I believe, on June 30th, 2014. So uh, we're five years into this website now, and it's evolved quite a bit. Yeah, every time I log on, there's a new thing. In fact, there's even a new thing now, you know, sure. with the big videos and stuff. So, Jason, give us a tour sure. on, on what all's here. Well, first first and foremost, one thing that I, that I absolutely love about the RTS website um, is that this website was built by collision repair professionals for collision repair professionals. This is, this is, this is meat and bones here. This isn't uh, fluffy stuff. This isn't uh, you know in bringing was it no it wasn't a, a marketing kind of campaign. It wasn't uh, uh, it was designed by collision repair professionals uh, for collision repair for professionals. Now y'all do all of this in Appleton, so it's separated from Hoffman Estates yep. in Chicago and yeah. This website although it looks and looks and feels very much similar to the iCar.com website, and it will when we launch our, our our new website in the not too distant future. Um, this is really this everything on here is, is developed by um, a handful of folks back in Appleton, um, all with collision repair background. Um, we do a lot of the re a lot of the research, the whole the website programming, all the the database uh, behind it that drives it is all kind of housed uh, right in our little RTS wing at the tech center, and uh, we've uh, we've got you know Danielle specializing in the in the in the the, the development of the uh, the database and and Scott's really good on the back end of the programming side of things, and then we've got you know Susan on Ask iCar and and Jared and Kylie and uh, Jake doing a lot of the research that fuels it, so. It's a, it's a heck of a collaborative effort. Um, and like I said, it's just been, I think one of the reasons it's been so well received is, is because of that whole closure pair right. approach to it. it. You're talking to a peer. Yeah. yeah and that, the, that comes across in how the little short articles are written. Yep. There's no fluff there, right? Right. Um, and then the content that's served up and how it's arranged. It, it, I don't want to yeah. say it fits my mind. That might be scary for a lot of people to, to think about, but it does. It, it you know, you get on some OE sites and yeah. you can't find your way around, but you can find your way around on RTS, so that's really good. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's one, th one of the reasons that we've kind of, like, look at the collision repair news articles. Those are, are short, you know, one, maybe two paragraph uh, articles. They're not long, extensive articles that are gonna require five, 10 minutes of reading. And, you know, obviously that's, that's, that's great as well, but these are things that we learn about and we try to share that information as quick as possible. And I'll show you one example of that. And just one thing I also really like about it, because we do do it in Appleton with, with, that, with that team is, we can be extremely nimble on this website. We don't have to go through multiple, you know, reviews and processes. So, for example, just two nights ago, I received an email from from Audi, and they were asking us to make available some of this uh, information on the new e-tron that's coming out. Um, so, yesterday morning, just you know, under 12 hours from receiving the original email, we had you know an article draft done on it, and we've linked up to these this uh, all this e-tron information that that Audi's now got available for that vehicle. That's just hitting the market. Um, so again, it allows us to be nimble, get information out there in a, in a short fashion, short articles, keep your attention real quick and just kind of give you some tidbits that you need to know. Right, so let's start at the top there, Jason. Yeah. So there are there are things I can see on the portal and never be a, a subscriber. Yes. And then there are some things that are protected. So I see that you've logged in because you, yep. obviously you're a subscriber, way to go. I am. Um, but so what, what are the different levels? If I never was a subscriber, what would I see? So the main thing that's, that we really want to make available for, for non-subscribers and subscribers alike is that closure repair news article, those quick snippets. At least if we can share some information with you, even if you're not a subscriber, now you can go find that information if you want to learn more about it. Um, the other thing that does is, um, because if it's behind the subscription, it's, it's not search engine optimized. And so we can't see those when you do a Google search for, for example, if I was looking for Audi e-tron collision repair, it won't show up if it's behind the login. But because it's in front of the login, 
that would come up uh, when you do a search on that. So that really enables to get, kind of drive traffic to the website by optimizing uh, our search capabilities on that. So that's, that's the main thing. Now the other areas where we've got a lot more time and commitment, and I, I think about like the OEM calibration requirement search. Um, Jake spends pretty much every day building that database. So he's got thousands of hours invested every year into that. And that's a lot of time and effort and, and work that goes in behind it. We've got access to all the OEM information that he's researching every time. So things like that, that are a little bit more time intensive, a little bit more labor intensive, that's what's behind the subscription. But um, we, the subscription side of it is also readily available. So it's not just a subscription website, which I think is important to note. So every iCar Gold Class business, every iCar Platinum individual, um, people who have taken four iCar classes within a year, all have access to the RTS website. So it's not, in addition to all this training that I'm taking, I have to go in and I'll subscribe to the RTS website. You've already got automatic access to the website if you meet those factors. And we're working on with a, with a few organizations in the industry to allow their members to have access to it as well. And, and there'll be more on that as we, as we kind of, as we kind of uh, build that process. But we are working with a, a major association to grant all their members access to RTS, as well as an information provider that's going to have direct links to RTS from their system. Right, so there's a lot of ways to get it. Yeah. Now, you mentioned one of the things is that if I just take four courses, yes. so I, I don't even have to be a gold or a platinum or whatever, just take four courses, and can those be any four courses? Four online classes, four live classes, four whatever classes. As long as you're taking four within a 12-month period, we'll maintain the access right. uh, on that. And, and some of those four are short classes, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So it could have been from the vehicle technology specific uh, category that, you know, regardless of, of what you're actually training on from ICAR or Gold Class or Platinum or whatever, those can still be of interest and should still be of interest. Right. And this is what, if, if I pay, it's like $200 a year, yeah, is that so correct? Yeah, so $26 for a, for a one day pass, $200 a year for an individual or 17 and change for, for a complete shop. Um, but the, again, it's the, the preferred role for me again is is if you get that education right. and the knowledge, it, it, it pairs yeah. nicely together. So four forty-ish dollar classes is you know even better than the two hundred dollars. Sure. But Absolutely. but even an individual, two hundred dollars a year is nothing when you start right. looking at really what's in there. And I think a lot of people don't know right. what you've put in here. Yeah, <laughs> and how much time it saves me. So I, I get asked all the time, Kristen, would you teach a class on how to do OEM research? And, and, or people will say, well, how did you just happen to know that? And if I could just yeah. have your brain, well, it, it's, I'd love to say I'm, I'm amazingly intelligent with all of sure. this collision repair, but really I cheat. Everything I get is on the, is sure. on the RTS portal. So it, it, that's my confession, I cheat. <laughs> so well, One thing I think is important about the RTS website, we don't have, this isn't OEM, Collision repair service information. This isn't all data. This is this is this complements OEM's collision repair information. This complements all that information. So this kind of gets you pointing in the right direction. So it's not going to be the only place you're going to have to go, but it heads you down that right path. And I'll use an example. So I'll yep. go I'll go into our OEM partial part replacement search, for example. Okay, um, this we get questions all the time on: Is there a sectioning procedure for X vehicle? And I'll just pull up. Uh, let's pull up. Uh, let's pull up a Honda. On a cord here we'll use. So I'm logged in again. So even if you're not a subscriber, you're not logged in, you can still get to this point. When I click on the next link is when you would be prompted to log in if, if you weren't a subscriber or if you hadn't logged in yet. So if I look at um, a 2019 Honda Accord, um, what it's going to tell me is that for the front lower rail, there is no OEM published sectioning procedure available. However, they do offer a partial part at factory scene replacement. And just uh, for clarification, we're talking sectioning, we're talking you need a saw or a cutoff wheel to take the part off. If it's partial part at a factory seam, we're talking you know, drill bits. So that's just a clarification that we always try to make clear on it. So um, you can see here that, uh, for example, no section procedure available for a lot of these parts. Um, and if there's not a section procedure available, I'm now going to need to go, okay, do they say, what do they say about if there's no section procedure available? Complete part replacement is the only option. So as I'm writing my repair plan, I've used this website now, and I say, okay, there's no section procedure available, therefore, I'm going to have to write this for a complete rail replacement, or if the damage warrants it, and I can see that there's a single OEM location, I can write it for that. But now I, at least I know how to, how to start developing that repair plan, and now I can log into the Honda website and actually get the procedure. But it really helps me put together that repair plan in the Extremely beginning. Extremely helpful for estimating, because I can do a whole lot here without having to jump to the OE, which is going to, in a lot of cases, I'm going to spend an hour, hour and a half on the OE website. And as I'm doing that repair plan, 
what I like to call process mapping my repair. I'm making my notes so that when I actually do get to the OEM procedure website, I, I'm not just wandering around aimlessly down the rabbit holes. You know what you're I'm, looking for. Yeah, I know where I'm going. Yeah. So I'm just going to pull up another example here just again to look at um, what it looks like when there are procedures available. So you can see here front rail, you know, Ford's got one on the F-150 for that single location. Um, the upper rail says warning, do not section. So now again, if I've got damage at the upper rail, I now know I'm going to be in a complete part replacement process on right. that. The other thing I like here is just like when we teach the OEM classes, we talk about how the OE pay websites offer me a lot of hot links. Mm -hmm. um, and all data's uh, procedures offer me a lot of hot links as well. But up here at the top, even just because I've selected 2018 Ford, you've got more hot links for me. You've got additional RTS information. You're going to take me straight to the OEM pay website. I don't have to wander around and yep. go, well, where's the OE website? Um, you've got some best practices information for me there. There's so many documents here yeah. that, I mean, especially for my estimators, I always tell estimators in every shop I go to, why isn't this just a permanent pull-up tab on your sure. desktop? Right. Um, it, you know, you, you just mentioned... Homepage. I mean, homepage, yeah. You mentioned, you know, you're spending an hour and a half trying to research this information. So I want to, that, that's, a, that's a good segue into the OEM calibration requirement search. We put together an ICAR 360 video, which we'll, we'll touch on uh, what that is a couple of years ago on a Ford F-150 around ADAS. Um, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, blind spot, adaptive cruise control, this truck that we use had, you know, was, was, had all these features on it. I spent about eight hours researching when calibration is required. Not in the calibration procedures, not, you know, setting it up for calibration, just, just researching like, okay, if I take the bumper off, do I need to calibrate the adaptive cruise control? If I remove the glass. So I spent, you know, eight hours of my time. Now, there's a lot of F-150s on the road all around. It's a fairly popular uh -huh. vehicle, right? So if every one of those vehicles, you know, that, that have been involved in a collision, so what, 750,000 vehicles a year, one in 10 cars get wrecked. So let's say that, you know, seven, there's, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of cars. Eight hours times every one of those trucks across North America is a lot of time, effort, money that the industry is, expanding, uh, is spending. But we've got Jake at, at Appleton. He did the research and he makes this information available to say, hey, you know what? If you remove the glass on this vehicle, you're gonna to have to calibrate it. So now again, when you're building that repair plan, you now know I need to include that. So when I'm thinking, look, there's a chip in this glass, it's coming out, I'm putting a new one in, I'm gonna to have to calibrate that. I can build that in my, my repair plan. It's not at the 11th hour on a Friday afternoon, right before the customer gets picked up. Or not up, done at all. Or not done at all. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's it, we, we've done a lot of that research. And I'll just, I'll use that vehicle, for example, as we, as we walk through and kind of walk you through what exactly this is. And this is a tool that has been very well received by the industry. This one's been quite popular, I think, because of the whole ADAS movement and all the confusion, everything that's out there. So if I look at, um, was pull up a 2017 here. So a couple of things that we've got on this. Again, in addition to the link. So what we've done is we have taken the industry term that, for the system. So for for this um, for this example, I use adaptive cruise control. Okay. So in our ICAR courses and in general publications, we talk about adaptive cruise control. Ford calls it cruise control with adaptive cruise control. Uh, you look at like the Subaru Eyesight. That you know that's their brand name, the Subaru Eyesight. We would say, hey, it's you know, forward collision warning system or, or whatever term is on there. So we've put the industry term and we've put the, the, the marketing term or the information that's found in the body repair manual term for that. So as you're going through there, so if I look, if I do a search for adaptive cruise control in the Subaru manual, I might not find anything. If I do a search for eyesight, I might find what I'm looking for. So we try to make sure that we've got the industry term as well as the OEM specific term. The next step in there that we've got is we identify where either the sensors or the camera are going to be located for that particular system. Uh, so right now for that for cruise control in the F-150, you can see that there's a sensor or sensors behind the front bumper cover or grill. So still not as specific as we'd ultimately like it to be. I can see in the long term where it's going to say there is a sensor on the left front of this vehicle behind the, the, the bumper. Or there is a camera located in, you know, the, the, I'd like to get a little bit more specific and even potentially include some pictures of it. So, you know, again, the vehicle's been involved in occlusion, right? So if there's right. a, a moduling on the ground, how do I know what that is? Where did well, that go? Where did that go? What's it look <laughs> like? Extra so, parts. <laughs> so we'd like to expand that at some point as well and get a little bit more information on there. But again, we've got, you know, a handful of people that have built this entire website with tens and tens of thousands of pages on it. Um, so again, we'll kind of indicate where the sensors and or cameras are located on it. Um, we've also included whether or not a diagnostic trouble code will set with that system if there's a system issue with it, as well as whether or not a malfunction indicator lamp is illuminated. 
And the reason that we've got there, that information is because for a long time, people thought no light on the dash, everything is good. Send it. Obviously not, obviously not the case. Same with the DTCs <laughs> even. There may not be a DTC there that says you need to calibrate something, but um, we want to make sure that we, we indicate when there, is, when, when there is and when there isn't again. But those, that system mill, those lamps, um, there's been a lot of confusion for whatever reason around that. I think we've gotten past that, but we still want to let you know whether or not a, a light will right. light on We're it. at least making progress. Right. Now, right. one of the things here that you just mentioned I think is good to clear up because I've had this misconception come up. If I come in here to the iCar and where it says DTC set and, and they have the no box, I have some people that think that that means there's nothing I have to do. But that actually means there's kind of more you got to do because you don't get that flag of saying, here's a DTC that relates to this system. Now, fortunately, most of the systems that we run across do set a DTC yeah. at this issue. But there may be cases, so I'll, um, like the, uh, and I, I can't confirm this, but I'm just thinking like the, the Honda Lane Watch camera. It's just a camera that displays on, on the center console. And we could look it up, but I, I don't believe that that would set a DTC because it's just, it's a, it's a camera feed, right? Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, we, we try to let you know whether or not there's a DTC. And, and a lot sometimes we aren't able to find things. You know, right. So if it's not identified, we just mark that it's not identified. We'll do more research and we'll continue to, uh, to update this as we move forward. But um, the next step in the so process of so now- Jake's gonna stay busy for a while. Jake's gonna be yeah. busy for a while. Yeah, well, I think that's a, great, that's a great point because you hear from shops all the time, how are we ever supposed to keep track of this? This is too much information. This is too much to do. You know, how, how would I ever have, you know, my own diagnostic guy? And well, basically, everybody in the industry has Jake. Yeah, that's um, right. I mean, so got a Jake. all 30 something thousand, what we would consider, you know, A class facilities in the United States can kind of count Jake as on their team. That's right. Jake's in a way. On their team. Yep, absolutely. I think we should do a Jake commercial with some khakis. I don't know. I know Jake sure. owns yeah. khakis now. <laughs> we get Jake some khakis. Sure. <laughs> Um, all right, so the next the next piece that we've got in our in our in our, our calibration search now, if I click on that sensors behind the front bumper, it's just going to scroll down. Rather than scroll down, I'm just going to click on it. It's going to do a, a quick link down to the bottom. So now, if I look at that sensor behind the front bumper cover or grill, it tells me that they call that the cruise control module. Um, so again, the always specific name in there is cruise control module. If that sensor is removed, calibration is required. Um, if calibration is not completed or if we do something wrong, a DTC will set. Uh, we also, you know, that you do need a scan tool to do this particular calibration procedure, as well as you will need some special tools. Now, in the case of the adaptive cruise control on this particular vehicle, I know that that's just a level, but a lot of times it might be the target boards, especially if we're talking about forward-facing cameras, or we're talking about rear park assist, uh, you know, issues, or if you build something. So there may be some special tools required. Mm -hmm. Another enhancement in the future could be more information on what, the, what that particular tool is. So again, that's great information for the estimator because now I know, one, where I'm driving my research right. a little bit deeper, and now I'm beginning to just determine, is this an in-house capability? Do I need to send it to the dealer? If I need to send it to the dealer, then I'm going to have to account for that time mm -hmm. when I decide what the cycle time on this repair is going to be, and I set that expectation with the customer. And so I just want to I want to go up because there was only one calibration requirement for that for that front sensor. But I look I'm looking at the rear or the camera near the rearview mirror, the imaging process module A. So again, if I'm searching for camera, and yeah. I might not find it. I would not have entered that you in would, my search parameters on the that. OEM site. No, yeah, I wouldn't have. But right? I'd be like, where the hell is blah? And here's the frustration thing. And, and so image, now this processing module. Processing. In this example, you see there's a lot more calibration requirements. So if the windshield is replaced, if there's a change in the tire size. You know, anybody ever put different tires sizes on a on well, a truck and jacked it truck. up a little I bit, Well, especially a big old truck. I mean, it's right? Arkansas, right? Yep. Yeah. So, um, or if there's suspension damage, airbag deployed, or if the interior trim mirror, mirror is replaced. So, a lot of factors. Just again, I've got a chip in the glass. Conventionally, in, in the past, I'd bring my guy out, he'd put the new glass in, and be on his merry his or her merry way. Now we know that we need to calibrate that camera uh, on this, and it may be a static calibration, it might be a dynamic calibration. We need more information, but at least now I know. I'm gonna have to do this. I'm gonna have to go to the OEM information, log in and find that procedure and put it in my repair order. Yep. A lot of cool stuff. I mean, Alex, I use it every day. People go, how'd you know that? And I go, hey, you know. You know. You've got a Jake. I've got a Jake. <laughs> got a, got yeah, a Jake. and I've got an RTS portal. That's right. So so the, um, the OEM calibration requirement search, the partial replacement search, OEM restraint search, hybrid disable, um, those are all kind of powered by that same database. And you can either go in each one based on what you need, or what we've done is we've added a quick search by vehicle. So now I can go in here, put my make, model, year vehicle in there, and it's going to give me links to partial part, hybrid, restraints. Yeah. So let's do that uh, real quick. Let's sure. say that I've got a Toyota. All right. I like Toyota. So 
Toyota. Not okay. Volkswagen. I like Toyota. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's make it a Camry. It's a those nice are, popular those vehicle. Those pretty popular. See, right. Camry. Okay. So and it's a 2017. Do I have to say year or can I just? If you, or will if, it help filter? If you if you put don't put a year in there, it's going to give you everything. If we put 17, it's only going to give us our 17 okay. results, of course. Perfect. And so here you go. So um, if I'm an estimator sitting in a shop, right, and I, I've got one of these that have come in, and we talk about what the estimator has to do before they even go to the car, what has to be researched before you even allow your blueprint technician to begin tear down, right. and that seems overwhelming, here is what you guys have already done for me. Yep. So it's it's like inviting. Yeah, we've got hours invested in this, and we can even see here we brought in our Ask iCar inquiry. So that's currently the only Camry that we have a question on, apparently. But yeah. 2017 Camry, and again, is there a section procedure available for the front lower rail? And we, I get the same results if I click on the OEM partial part replacement search as well. Right. If it's a hybrid, high, I don't even yeah, have hybrid, to. Hybrid, high voltage. Yeah. Or, Here's uh, my Camry. calibration. Here's yeah. my restraint system. Um, I think after we did last year when we did the blueprinting show and talked about what the restraint requirements were yeah. for General Motors after an accident. We had shops going, wait, what? There's a lot. I had, there's a lot of stuff I got to do that has nothing to do with with or without an airbag deployment. Um, and we get a lot of hits on the airbag because, I mean, that information is readily available from a lot of different sources, um, but we still get a lot of hits on on that on, on that particular one. And I want to, since we've, since we've got this hybrid vehicle here, um, let me pull up, kind of show you what, our, what the OEM hybrid and electric vehicle disabled search looks like. Um, so, We've got an indicator here where that high voltage battery is located, um, where the 12 volt battery is, if there's a mid voltage battery, which some of them have, um, and then where that high voltage battery disconnect is. So again, as I'm work, walk, working on this vehicle, I uh, walk up to it and I, hey, I recognize that it's a hybrid vehicle and I'm not interested in, in injuring myself today uh, before yeah. working on it. I don't want to die. I'm going to go on and disable yeah. <laughs> it. And so what we've done is we've gone through and, and put the information on how to go ahead and disable that. Uh, disable that, uh, that that high voltage battery. And some of them offer a procedure for a scan tool, some offer without, and so we've included that as well, um, or a high voltage DVOM is required because some you might they ask you to test it afterwards. So um, another feature that we've recently, not recently, or I guess <laughs> added, this is a new word, sure, right? yeah. we make up words all the time, like repairability. Repairability, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> um, is it trademarked yet? Uh, well, not okay. yet, we'll, right. we'll work on that maybe. Um, but so this is a, a relatively newer feature on it. Um, and again, just to let people know that, hey, when you're working on these vehicles, um, here's where. And then we do have links also to um, like the emergency response guys. So Toyota publishes those, a lot of the always publish those. So we've got links out to those if somebody wants to take a look at, at those as well. Right. Uh, but again, this is uh, good information and how to work on it. So again, the rest of the vehicles, you know, the structure's the same. It's just that this one happens to be a hybrid. And so I need to disable the vehicle yeah. uh, and work safely around it's it. It's cliff notes in a yeah. way. Yeah. Yep. Well, while we're here and we're going down that left-hand side, let's get into that iCar best practices yeah. down there. Um, now, for years, and I, you know, I'll show my age, right? Um, we used to have the uniform procedures. Yes. And then vehicles got advanced, and and we now have some OEM specifics. But there still are some best practices, some sure. generalizations that every shop should follow. And this is a great place. They're all kind of right here. Sure. I love this right here. So, so let me start back with the, with the with the UPCR with the Uniform Procedures for Collision Repair. Those were more those were SOPs. Those were kind of the process to go through, but they still relied on the OE specific information. So if I look up the, the the UPCR on sectioning a lower rail, we didn't use the ICAR general section guidelines. It said identify the cut location based on the vehicle maker procedure. So that's one thing. There's a little misconception mm -hmm. out there is what exactly is UPCR. It wasn't a way to fix. Everything. Every vehicle, it was, hey, from an SOP standpoint, we do this first, and then we do this, and then we do this. We refer the OE information, we do this, we do, we inspect it. So that's how what UPCR was. Um, the ICAR best practice, and these, you know, ICAR best practices maybe isn't even the best term for this because all we do is publish these best practices. These are inter-industry inter developed and vetted best practices. As part of the RTS initiative, we hold what we call repairability summits. We bring in subject matter experts from vehicle manufacturers, from tool equipment manufacturers, insurance companies, closure repair facilities, subject matter experts on a particular topic. And we talk about, in the absence of an OEM procedure or recommendation, what should this best practice be? So again, these are inter-industry developed and vetted best practice that we just happen to publish. So this isn't Jason and Josh saying like, hey, what should we say about uh, sectioning apart in the same location twice. Yeah, that we, would be no good. We, yeah. We, yeah. we ask the industry 
what should we say? So if the vehicle maker doesn't say anything, what should we say about sectioning the same location twice? Um, unfortunately, Kristen, we had to put this full body sectioning should not be done. Yeah. Um, we've shot the, what does ICAR say segment at NACE. We've talked about it. I've presented on it. Yeah. I just saw another full body sectioning the other post day. the other day. I, uh, I copy and paste that. I, I go back to that episode. I, I do the whole, you know, on YouTube, you can tell it to start a video at a certain time. I do that and I copy and paste that into responses on social media. I want to say two, three times a day. I know. And that's what, when I, when people go, I was given a, a talk the other day with one of the OEs and you know, we've, we've talked a lot about what's happened from 2005 onward, but we're still really dealing with mentality of 2005 downward. Sure. And so we, we sometimes have to educate I don't want to say educate down to raise up, but but sectioning. Why are we full body clipping? Why are we still talking about this? Well, and, and you know, and, <laughs> and I saw I saw all those posts of people going, "Well, I learned this in iCar. I I car this and I car that." And, and so that's why I'm like, you know what? And I I started looking through our curriculum. I was sort of looking through. We never developed an article. Never actually came out and said like, "Don't do it anymore." We just removed it from all the curriculum because it wasn't applicable. So that's why we got together with this 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 repairability summit was about a 30 second conversation. Like, hey, is everybody okay if we don't do full body sectioning anymore. You know, you know, <laughs> didn't, didn't take long. Didn't to take long on that one. So, yeah. but again, these are inter-industry developed and vetted best practice that we just happen to publish out there. So, um, again, there's 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 several in here. Um, recycled quarter panels with our rolled hem flanges, which, if you notice, uh, you may have noticed in that that um, partial part replacement matrix. If it's got a rolled hem flange, we indicate it on there as well. So, uh, we 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 go to the the, the, uh, the to Chicago Auto Show and Detroit Auto Show. And uh, people are looking at looking at staff funny when they're walking around feeling the quarter panel lip on all these cars going like, what's that guy doing over there? They look, yeah. you know. So anyways, yeah. Uh, but yeah. It's, and the, it's the good thing. Is, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> See if I can drive, be the one that drives yeah. off the floor. The great thing about these, you know, we share them often. Inclusion puts them out. I, I, I don't want to say I've weaponized them in some cases, but I, I do use them as, a, as my sword in negotiations a lot. The key to think about is that this isn't something that, ICAR just came up with on their own. Right. This isn't just Kristen's take on what she right. thinks things should be in the industry. This is a panel of people that get together that represent all facets of the industry and agree, hey, this yep. is right. So if I'm taking this in, whether it be a courtroom or, an, or a negotiation or mediation or whatever, I can say all segments of the industry have agreed to this. This isn't, this isn't controversial. <laughs> this isn't an opinion, so to speak. This is a uh, an anonymous de- or anonymous, a unanimous decision. Yeah. yeah. So different from you know, anonymous. anonymous. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So that's Which like, no one is online. I do. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and we'll continue to add more of those best practices as they come up. Um, we we've been talking a little bit about uh, we're looking at probably doing uh, another repairability summit in the not too distant future around kind of um, again in the absence of OEM procedures or OEM information um, about like pulling on mul- mixed material vehicles. Has anybody done any research? What research do we need to do? Uh, we're also talking about one on recycled ADAS parts, not just the cameras and sensors, but what about a bumper cover, you know, and that film thickness on there. And there's a lot of things that we didn't have to think about in the past. And, and again, the, the vehicle manufacturers may not have that information because they're not thinking about those things. Sure. Um, but the industry is, and we're going to start, we're going to start getting questions on like, Hey, can I put a recycled bumper cover on this vehicle? And what do I have to do if, if, if I'm going to, you know, how much of the paint do I have to remove? And there's just a lot of things that we, that are a lot of unknowns. And the only way that we can develop these is by bringing those subject matter experts in together and talking about it and discussing it and, and then publishing ultimately best practices on it. Right. And ICAR is perfectly equipped to do that because yep. you can get all the industry segments to the table. Um, I could send out an invitation. I don't think they'd come. So, <laughs> but it, y'all, y'all would show up. That would be uh but let's talk about um, 360 videos. So um, we try to share them whenever we can get yeah. them, whenever we can put them up. We have a new um, one available, by the way. We'll yeah, to get you there. so I'm going to get that one on the yep. online next. These are fantastic for new cars that are coming out. Yeah, so the, the way I've always kind of looked at these 360 is kind of like a, it's like a collision repair car show. Um, so we're not, I don't, you know, we're not looking at horsepower and torque and the things that you're going to see on the, on the placard at, at the auto show. What we're trying to do is walk around the vehicle and say like, hey, be aware, it's got an ultra high strength steel lower rail and you can't section it. And be aware, it's got a blind spot camera and if you remove the glass, you have to calibrate it. So it's literally a 360 degree walk around a vehicle talking about the features that we've got on it. Um, and ultimately, we're also at the same time we're doing the 360 videos, 
we've got curriculum in a lot of cases to support that. So like the vehicle comes, I'll use that F-150 again. So if we went back to 2015 and said like, hey, here's a new F-150, be aware it's got aluminum body structure and an HSLA steel frame and it's got section procedures and it's got ADS. And by the way, we've got a training program available as well. So kind of, kind of pique their interest in it a little, we give them some of the high, highlights of the information and then follow that up with training on exactly how to repair that vehicle. Awesome. Um, our build, goal- Build the awareness and then give a place to, to solve for that. Right. And so here's the latest one. We just published it this morning, 2019 Ford Expedition Lincoln Navigator, letting you know that, hey, here's some of the things that are similar to both the F-150 Expedition Navigator. Here's some things that are different on it. It's got some different features. So the blind spot system's found in a different location on Expedition Navigator than it is on F-150, which you wouldn't maybe necessarily think if it's got the same you know, design tail lamps. Um, but the B pillar forward, everything is the same. You know, so just trying to share that information, let people know what the deal is on it. Uh, we've got Expedition Navigator, we've got Nissan Leaf, we've got some uh, some Volkswagen procedures on there. So just a just a, a bunch of different uh, features on different vehicles. We've got uh, some Lexus vehicles covered in here, some Honda vehicles covered in here. Just again, trying to to let you know that hey, if this comes in your vehicle in your shop, be aware it's got some of these. You got some on things it. you need to pay. I've used these a lot with customers. These are really great. I think as shops, we don't do a good job of explaining the um, the technical repair with the of the car to the customer very well. Um, and so when with when there has been a crossover, um, these have been great little snippets to send links to customers yeah. and go, hey, watch this, and then maybe some things on your estimate are going to make a little bit more sense sure. on why they're there. Yep. Um, now. There's another feature that you guys have, and this is perfect because we've, we've got down there and there was Danielle in the Ask I car um, at the bottom. Yep. Um, one of the benefits of you being you and Josh, you being who you are and, and you know me getting to be Collision Hub and going around all the industry events is we make some really nice connections um, with OEs, um, knowledge experts in certain fields. Yep. And when we get stuck, We've got a number in our phone. There's yeah, right. someone we can call and that's going to pick up and talk to us. Yep. But for most of the shops around the country, they feel really isolated and they don't know where to go. Yep. And that's really what Ask iCar is, is that's their go-to phone a friend guy. That's that, that, that absolutely is what uh, Ask iCar is, as well as, as you mentioned earlier, our, our OEM linking pin mechanism, which I'll, which I'll, which I'll walk through as well. But um, again, we, if, if we get a lot of questions on, again, is there a section procedure, is there a position statement, um, what calibration, we get a lot of those types of questions. But we also get a lot of like, hey, I've got the procedure, but I'm not really sure exactly what it's asking me to do or what it's what it's trying to, I'm having troubles interpreting it. And, and we run across the same thing, well, that, but again, I can call the OE and ask them. Yeah, well, that one behind you. Yeah. I mean, so what we had, I mean, I think Sean Collins and Dennis Kitcher from 3M are probably some of the two best technicians in the States that I've ever worked with, or yeah. I, let's, let's say work with loosely. I watch them work, I learn from them, <laughs> right? Um, but I mean, this Honda uh, B pillar here, the, all the procedures that were back there, to see the two of them put those procedures up, stand there and scratch their chin, yeah. s them wonder what to do, pick up the phone, call Honda, get Scott Caboose on the phone. And they spent a, a good solid day before we even got to actually doing the repair. Um, if those guys yeah. are struggling right. to interpret what the procedures are when we print them off from the OE website, it's it's hard to be a tech these days. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's it can be a challenge, and we, we have the same conversation. We're shooting video. I mean, you know, a half an hour video shoot takes a day because you're like, well, what what should we do here? What does this mean? And the layering and the you know, the whole process is it can be complicated. And we recognize also that you know technicians unfortunately probably aren't going to be able to to take that time that kind of time to do it. So again. Mm -hmm. That's where the Ask I car comes in. That's where that OEM linking pin comes in. But let me walk you through the Ask I car okay. piece first. So the first thing we do is when again, this is one of the features that you do have to be a subscriber in order to get to the Ask I car results pages on it. Okay, uh, but what you can come again and do is again look by that make, model, year, vehicle as well as subjects and get the information that people have already asked on. So let's go back to your your Camry again because we. Uh, that was a good one. Let's see here. Where's our Toyota? A little small font here. Okay, Toyota. Camry, that was a 17, I believe, correct? 17, yeah. Yep. So we already know that we've only had that one question because we saw that earlier. So now I go, okay, well, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something different. Um, now I need to go, I want to submit a new closure repair question here. So what I do is I'm already logged in. I put my iCar ID, my name, my business, phone number, and then make, model, year, and then that specific, specific question on here. Now, one, one thing that we've done um, with regard to our Ask iCar inquiries is 
we have made a commitment that within two hours, we will, we will contact you. Um, if you call us, it's usually pretty, pretty, pretty Susan, and, Susan or Kylie or whomever answers the phone like immediately usually. I mean, I'll be sitting in the meeting with Susan, she'll just get up and leave all the time because she's going to take, a, <laughs> take an Ask ICAR inquiry. Um, but whether you call us- At least that's what she tells you. That's what, right? <laughs> We're gonna go with that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's yeah. go with that Oh, one. my phone's ringing again. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> But we made a commitment that within two hours, we'll, we'll reach out to you as some sort of contact. Hey, Kristen, we got your Ask ICAR inquiry. Just want to let you know, we're going to be working on it. More often than not, it's here's your answer. We, you know, we're pretty quick that way. Um, but we, within two hours, we will, we will get back to you. If we can't find what we're looking for, within 24 hours, we will then escalate that to the vehicle manufacturer, part through that OEM linking pin, which, I'll, which again, I'll, I'll walk through right. momentarily. So there's Susan right there. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, there's Ms. Ask don't forget right your, there. Uh, don't forget your photo. That's right. Um, <laughs> so um, another thing that we've done, just want to bring this to the attention of everybody, we are really trying to get Hyundai to release their closure repair information. They've got fantastic closure repair information, as you know. Everywhere but Everybody here. except for North America. Yep. So we've actually got a specific link for Hyundai closure repair questions so that we can put them in a database and file them and bring them to Hyundai and say like, here's, we need, we need your information. These vehicles, for complete safe call repairs, we need the information to repair these vehicles. So uh, it, please leverage that uh, yeah. <laughs> if, well, if you can. I, I, right now I'm just totaling them. If it's a structural component, right. if it involves welding, I, I don't want to guess, right. right? I don't want to put a customer in jeopardy, so I'm not going to guess on a repair procedure. Well, so. it, I'll, I'll, I'll use an example. I'll give you a, an example. This, this has recently happened. I'm not going to talk about the shop or the, the exact circumstances around it, but minor damage on a quarter panel, minor-ish damage on a quarter panel, but required quarter panel replacement. Entire unicide shows up. The collision repair facility decides, you know what? I'm going to section in the rocker panel. I'm going to section the sail panel, which is verbatim from, again, every manual from Hyundai in the rest of the world, except for the US, section the sail panel, section the rocker panel, reinspection takes place. Um, there's no procedure that says you can do this. You should have put the entire part in at factory seams, roof removal, windshield removal, doors, glass, blend. I mean, just an intrusive as can be uh -huh. repair for replacing a quarter panel, shopping and buying that car back because there was no procedure available that then they didn't follow procedure on that. So just a quick aside. So that's why we need that Hyundai information. Right. So again, uh, yep. drive to help us drive that information. Yeah, so, and I would say, I guess, even if you are not gonna fix the car, at least make the inquiry, give iCar yeah. the data. Yeah. I'll start doing that. <laughs> so I go back to our, our OEM linking pin again. So again, the opportunity for a technician through iCar to talk to a vehicle manufacturer. Because again, we get a lot of inquiries that, that we just we don't have the answer. We can't, we don't know what, where to find it, so we'll escalate that. Um, since we started that Ask iCar, that OEM linking pin engagement, we've had over 550 issues that we've escalated to the vehicle manufacturer. Um, of those, 82% have been closed. So they always have been quite responsive, and that includes Hyundai, Hyundai, which says there's, we're not getting right. responses because they don't have anything. Right. Uh, we know that, but again, that 82% includes the Hyundai responses that are in there. Take those out, certainly that number jumps up. So they always have been very responsive to, to the industry's needs of, hey, we've got the procedure, but this is missing, or we don't understand what this means, or you know, what's your recommendation for you know, yeah. particular or, or Are you sure? That's or really you what sure? you want me to do. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And so a lot of times we'll, we'll call Scott. Yeah. And Scott will be able to give us an answer. Sometimes Scott can't give us an answer. Sometimes Scott has to go to Japan to get the answer. So again, that as of the time, and it's not going to help your particular vehicle on that day, um, but next month or the following month or six months from now, if you have the same situation, we may now have an answer right. for you. And now that answer's in there. So if, if I start the question, which let's take it for most shops, I can't just call the OE direct and get an answer, but the OE is going to be very responsive to you. Yep. But once you have an answer, that's now in there for everyone else to see. No. So the Part whole the industry database. benefits from your inquiry. And, and that's another great, because in the, in the past, we've always had kind of a tech inquiry hotline available, but again, you'd call me, I'd give you the answer, and now the two of us don't know the answer, but Josh won't. We're and, not telling Josh. We're not telling him. <laughs> no, don't, don't tell him. But, but chances are that Josh and others probably had that exact same question. They can now go and log in and take a look and, and see what those answers are. Right. It's a great tool. I mean, I just used it. I was telling you guys, I just used it the other day. Um, we've got a litigation case that's coming in, and I wanted to make sure that I was in the right spot and something was confusing me, and I sent it up, and I think, it was about 30 minutes I had a response from Susan. So with what I needed to have. Yeah. So it was good to good good response yeah. time. I was impressed. Right? Yeah. That's so. awesome. 
Um, we didn't talk about the OEM glass replacement. That's very similar to the other search uh, matrices that we've got. So again, what does vehicle manufacturer A, B, or C say about pinch weld prep and, and you know, top codes or not top codes. So we kind of got that information catalog. And then the last piece of the website um, is our OEM information pages. Um, and we've got, again, all the vehicle manufacturers that, we, that, are, that are available in North America. We've got a lot more information on you know, Ford and Honda than we do on you know, Audi and, and, and Jaguar Land Rover. So I'll, I'll use Ford as an example, but um, we've got a lot of Ford information. So when, whether it's Jerry or somebody else at Ford says, hey, I've got this new bulletin available, I've got this new procedure available, just like Mark, Mark Allen did with the Audi e-tron the other day. Like, mm -hmm. hey, this information is available, I'd like you to have it, share it where you think it's appropriate. We post that on the RTS website now. It's available to, to, for everybody to, to take a look at. Right. Um, but we've got a lot of different features on it. Um, we've got links out to the o, to the Ford Closure Repair website. Uh, very you know, OEM one stop, kind of the exact same kind of piece that we got there. Um, we've got so every uh, so if I click on that again, it's going to go to that database and pull up every article that we've published on Ford vehicles. And then again, these these search requirements are very similar to our left navigation bar there for others: calibration, partial replacement. Um, hybrid disable, glass replacement. I'll link to Ford iCar Training, because again, that's an organization that leverages iCar for some training, so we link back to iCar.com. Um, even the Ford vehicle website, so if you want to know about a particular vehicle, maybe you haven't run across before, you don't know a lot about the vehicle, just go to the consumer website and kind of learn about different features that are out there. Um, we've got their on-target publications uh, duplicated, their position statements, the steel repairability matrix, which is a fantastic tool if you haven't uh, if you don't have that, you absolutely need that hanging on your uh, on your toolbox and check it out. Laminate it and put a, th a ring through it along with General Motors and a couple others and they're right there on my desk all the time. Videos that we've put together with Ford and ADS information. And then the one thing that's kind of, that I think is pretty unique about this website that I haven't seen again from OEM One Stop or anybody is no two websites are alike, right? So the Ford Closure Repair Information website is vastly different than GM, which is vastly different than Toyota. So what we've done is we've put together a video series for everybody on, I'll put the mute on there so we don't get the volume on it, but exactly how do you access for closure repair information? What are the steps required to get there? And uh, so you can see Danielle's already logged in here. So we've got Scott kind of narrating through here. You can walk through the whole, the whole registration process. But eventually what he's going to do is show you exactly where to find yeah, the he Ford He keeps not showing me his credit card number. I keep watching, hoping. Yeah. He's going to slip at some <laughs> He's point. He's going to slip, right? One of those is going to be on there. Um, and we've done that for every vehicle manufacturer, so that's a, that's a, that's a great yeah. resource. And then, and then someone had a great suggestion. And uh, oops, let's so open up a new window here somehow. So someone had a great solution. That, again, things that you don't think about as you're putting these together, but because we can be so nimble with this, because it's a small group and we can act quickly. I tried logging in one day by trying to log into an OEM website while watching a video. That's very difficult to, to, mm -hmm. to kind of keep track. So what we've done is we've actually got printable step-by-step -step instructions as well. So you can print these off, put it in a binder next to the computer or next to the technician's workstation or wherever in your facility they're accessing information on exactly how to log into the website, where to find information. Um, so that's kind of a, a cool yeah. tool as well. Yeah, and if you go back to that just forward overview screen, yeah. um, one of the things we posted, I want to say it was maybe last week or the week before last, um, was a reminder about Nissan's tech news. Um, yeah. A phenomenal resource. I think every OE has some sort of resource that comes out um, quarterly a lot of times yeah. or, or you know, four times, three or four times a year. It just depends. Um, but in this one, um, every, when I go here, when I tell people I start every day here, I don't use OE One Stop. Um, I don't use any of those anymore. I, I'm thankful that we had those at one point. But right here, you guys will give me any news stories you've done um, that or right. any specialty, let's say Nissan made some sort of special change or whatever, yep. you put it there. Um, I can go down and, and get um, uh, the tech news. I get a link to your website. If the, the position statements are public, mm -hmm. which I'm still wondering why Toyota did what they did, we'll, 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 why they put those behind the wall. We'll get there eventually, right? But if the position statements are public, they're right there all on that same page. Yeah. And then if the OEM has their own news magazine or source, that's right there. So really, I mean, it's everything collision repair that that OE has that I need to know yep. right now in one spot. I don't need OE One Stop or this site or that site or whatever. I can start with everything I need sure. right here. And again, it's not going to be your only stop, but it should be your first stop. Right? It's your first and stop. Just and I was surprised. I mean, I would, we published that on, on Collision Hub's Facebook page. 
and and you know it started getting clicks and reshares and people were like, oh my God, is this a new service? And I was like, 2015. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's been there for a little sure. while, um, but just you don't know what you don't know. And, and you know, and from a technician standpoint, I mean, yeah, certainly you're up in the front office from time to time, but, you know, that's where publications are often kept, and that's where a lot of the information is, and this is this is uh, accessible on your phone, you know, so again, if you can, to, to your point, log in, hey, what's what article's been published recently? Yeah. Um, we've also had, so once you log in, you get automatically subscribed to our bi-weekly e-newsletter that comes out and it'll show you, hey, here's all the articles that we've published in the last couple of weeks. Um, when, we do, when we do tweets, so I know not everybody's on social media, but what we've even done is on the website is we've got our Twitter feed. So if you just want to see what we've even tweeted about over the past week, month, year, everything is right there at your fingertips and you don't have to even sign up for it if you don't yeah. want to. We can link you right on here. We do a lot of sharing of, you know, information from you, information from Repair Driven News, information from OEM. So again, it's a, it's a great centralized location for a lot of information in a fairly short period yeah. of time. I, but I, you mentioned it, and I think what I love about it the most is it is, it is curated and right. created by technicians yeah. that speak my language, yeah. that speak the language of the people that are you know, out in the, in the world fixing cars, yeah. and then they take that information, sometimes and translate it back to our language in the digestible amount that we need it, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it, I wanna say it's still probably the industry's best kept secret. Yeah. Um, I would love to get to a day where everybody really, this is their go-to, but still, to this day, I'm recopying and pasting and sharing stuff on yep. social media and going, go here, here's your answer. By the way, the answer is three, four years old. Um, so yeah. we're bringing you breaking news, um, yeah. but, uh, but it's, it's just, it's amazing. I, I don't know how to, if we push it more or yeah. do we start tattooing the website to people's arms. I don't know, we'll figure yeah. it out. So and I said, everything on here is, is with the intent of complete safe quality repairs. And that, that, that RTS team, that's, that's why we get out of bed in the morning. That's what drives us is complete yeah. safe quality repairs. And uh, so it's a lot of information on here. And, and as we explore other opportunities, again, with that association, with that information provider and making it more readily accessible, um, I see a day in the not too distant future where everybody's gonna have access to it because of whether they're training with us, whether they're a customer of this organization, whether a, a, a member of this association, I think that ultimately everyone's gonna have access to yeah. this and, and, and hopefully be able to leverage it on a daily well, there's, basis. There's just no excuse for not knowing anymore. And, to, and with, right. with what's out and available for technicians, you yeah. should not not know what's the right thing to should do, not, right? Not know. Right? Yes, you should, I mean, that's, there's just no excuse to not have the knowledge. It, um, and there's no excuse really why you can't take four online classes a year. Sure. The, the content in them, especially the vehicle specific training from the OEs, um, if you've got a tech in your shop and he's touching a Honda, why haven't they taken those online courses? Why yeah, hasn't that been done? Um, there's no excuse for not doing it. It's, sure. it's cheap. It, yeah. You know, it's not like we're talking a, what does it used to be? Maybe a 150 bucks and some change ticket and maybe three hours of a classroom. Sure, right. Those That's not even the commitment anymore. Right. And, and the one thing I would that I would uh, ask of, of your viewers, is if there's things on here, or if there's things on here that you believe are missing, that you, you know what, I'd love it if you had this feature, Yeah. let us know. I mean, whether it's through you, whether it's me directly, if you know Josh, whatever. Yep. Um, again, we want to make this as, as collision repair focused as possible. And if you think that this particular new tool will be a great asset, let us know and we, we can we can add it to the pipeline. Yeah, yeah well, right now, I, I can't think of what else I'd want. And then you guys add something, and I go, oh yeah, God, that was a good idea. So, <laughs> but yeah, if you have any ideas. But you know, like we said on the OE show, we're in the second year of the OEM programming and we tell you to start every day on the RTS portal. Um, there's, I would love to say that I'm, I'm got this amount of knowledge that that makes me special in the industry but really i just get it straight from my for my car in the rts portal so from jake. um yeah from jake, from jake. we I, <laughs> you guys can now have my jake as well right so <laughs> um but it's an amazing tool and it's for estimators it's for technicians it's for adjusters um it's for consumers even in a way i've sent consumers to the website a lot to just say mm -hmm. hey this isn't what i think Here's the industry, sure. you know, iCar, this is what this is what they're putting out to. So make sure that you get on the RTS portal. Remember, there's information on there whether you pay or not. So there's still good reasons to go there. Um, to get a membership, if you are gold class, platinum, yep. or if you've just simply taken four classes, four online classes, your access is free. Yep. Or you can pay $200 a year, yep. which is kind of nothing right. to have the access to it. Um, I will tell you a pro tip. 
right? The four classes is cheaper than the 200. It can be. If it's so, a right. yeah, so you could get your, you know, you could get your license and, and save a little money while educating yourself further at the same time. So, uh, Jason, Josh, thank you so much. Absolutely. When y'all get back to Appleton, give everybody in the room a high five. Call on it. Um, I do when I see them. Um, I think this was the tool the industry kept saying they wanted. We want everything in one place. We want to yeah. sim things simplified, right. and, and you guys delivered it to them. Yeah. So um, as we head to your or end your five-year anniversary, are we starting five years? Yeah, it'll or? Be June 30th will be five, five years. Five years, yeah. yeah. I'll so, get a cake or something. Okay, so as we cap off that five, uh, let's see more people in year six get yep. on it and use it. So um, we appreciate your time. Well, that's it for all three parts of our What's New with ICAR um, and for training and education and in-shop um, assessments and in-shop work, how to get your technicians where they need to be, how to get your estimators where they need to be. Um, and we will see you next time on Repair University. Thanks. <laughs>